something crazy just happened right now. I bought a new mic. Oh, and yes, the SFS2 trailer dropped. Poor thing got overshadowed by my new mic. <laughs> okay. First of all, if you haven't watched the trailer, go and watch it right now and wishlist the game right now. The link will be in the description. Okay, so you have read the title, you have seen the thumbnail. I'm not going to waste your time. So, let's go. In the very first frame of the trailer itself, we have the sun and it has six spikes. Not six spikes, six spikes. And thanks to the recent James Webb Space Telescope images, most of us are now informed that these happen because of diffraction from the reflective mirrors. And I know this means nothing, I know this is kind of like a shitpost. But now we know that the make-believe invisible camera person for the game has a hexagonal mirror. <laughs> Starting the video with a shit post. A very good analogy for my channel, actually. Okay, so now with the actual breakdown. First, we see a small rocket speeding away with the new engine. And this engine has not been revealed before, at least to my knowledge. And it has a purple plume, which looks very cool. And if we look at the Earth, the day-night cycle looks really cool from this angle, as you can see the dusk area in orange. So that's pretty cool. We also have a very realistic moon here, which looks awesome and then we have the space center again we have seen the space center in the previous leaks but that little cove there looks really promising and now there is nothing yet confirmed about that but i'm just giving ideas there is nothing confirmed yet i would like to state that again so yeah it could be used as like a harbor of sorts to go for a recovery mission like uh, to recover the fairings or as a docking port for the ships on which we can land the rockets like the drone ships we have with SpaceX. So like that little cove has a lot of potential. And now coming up next we have a rocket which sort of looks like the Atlas V carrying the Orion capsule except that this one has six boosters instead of the maximum five that the Atlas V can have. So it's like Atlas V N61 where N stands for the fairing and it, it has no fairing, so no fairing, N, 6 is the number of boosters and 1 is the engine on the upper stage, it only has one engine. And there's also a new part here, it might be a fuel tank or it may be used as a plumbing thing for the engine, like as a plumbing intermediary, so like which attaches the two engines to the main fuel tank. And we also have a look at the new engines here. Next, if we go to the launch pad, we have a look at the flame deflectors. And we can also see the frost buildup on the fuel tanks, which is interestingly not on the nose cone. Now, this happens because the fuel in these rockets is stored at a very low temperature. And when the water in the atmosphere comes into contact with this chilled fuel tank, it actually freezes into ice and forms a layer on the fuel tank. Now, this ice buildup is actually a really good thing because ice is an insulator and it prevents the fuel tanks from absorbing more heat from the surroundings. So the lack of this frost buildup on the nose cone implies that the nose cone will not carry any fuel, which I mean is no surprise, it is a nose cone, but uh, if we look at like simple rockets too, we have an option to add fuel in the nose cones, so that won't be happening in SFS2. And we also see the frost flaking off the rocket as the rocket vibrates during liftoff. And as the frost layer actually flakes off, we can see that it is actually being depleted. Like the intensity of the ice buildup is being lowered and lowered as the rocket vibrates and the frost flakes away. Next, we have a look at the interior of the big capsule and see four astronauts. They're wearing EVA suits with the all too famous boot covers which were used in the Apollo missions. So like uh, that is a really cool easter egg because now we can leave our own footprints on the moon. And next we see a really pretty Korolev cross. Is it still a cross if it has like six points to it? <laughs> I don't know. And uh, we also have a starship. Yeah. We see a starship going to the moon and the engine plume here suggests that these engines are going to be methalox engines which means that they are going to use liquid methane and liquid oxygen as fuel and oxidizer. And actually over the course of this trailer we see different engine plumes like different chromatic engine plumes if that makes sense. So I assume we will have an option to like add liquid hydrogen as fuel, liquid methane, RPG, RPG? RP1, RP1 as fuel. So I think we will have a lot of options when it comes to fuel. And we also have a look at a time lapse on Mars. And we also see the manned maneuvering unit, the MMU or the jetpack in action. Now there are two instances where the jetpack is shown in the trailer. One on the moon and the other here at the space station in orbit. 
Now, if you look closely, you will notice a white outline on one of the four space station modules. This probably means that the component is selected. And it means that we will now be able to select individual parts instead of the whole rocket like in SFS-1. Next, we see a moon buggy and uh, it is simplified as compared to its IRL counterpart. And also when it flips over, we see that there are no electronics on the underside. So either the rover base has electronics inside it or the wheels just don't need any power to work in this game. Now, in my opinion, the wheels will use some sort of power. Maybe the rover base has an integrated battery pack, who knows. It is just unlikely that the game would be unrealistic in this one specific aspect while trying its best to be realistic in other aspects. And now here we see astronauts on one of Mars's moons. Seems to be Phobos given how big Mars looks. And if you actually take a head count here, there are four astronauts, not three. Because I hope you didn't miss the one chilling on the top. Next we see a beautiful Earthrise from moon on what I assume is Orion. We also see a rocket on Venus and just like the one on Phobos, do not forget that there is one tiny astronaut going for a walk. Well, to be fair, it does get pretty cramped in a long flight, so it's always a good idea to stretch your legs when you land. You know, be it walking to passport control or like taking a hike in the sulfuric acid atmosphere. <laughs> and now here we see the Atlas Orion rocket re-enter the atmosphere. The re-entry effects actually look inspired from SFS re-entry, like from SFS 1. Which is very cool in my opinion because it links the two games and I think it makes SFS2 very grounded in a sense that it evolved from SFS1 so it is really good to have one feature that links back to SFS1. Next we can see that the game actually has drogue shoots. So instead of the parachute being half deployed first and then fully deployed like we have in SFS, we might have to first deploy the drogue chute and then the main parachute in this game. We also see a booster separation here and it seems that these separators are either small SRBs, small solid rocket boosters or have a firing mechanism. Now my guess is that these are just small solid motors used as separators here. Next we have a magnificent space station shot. There are actually two capsules here and the other capsule is over here. So we have all the three different capsules in this shot as well as the space station modules and two cupolas. Cupolas? Cupole? Cupolae? I don't know what the plural form is. Next we see a Mars lander undocking from a transfer vehicle and on the lander you can see these new landing legs. Now these are different from the landing legs we saw at the beginning of the trailer. Those landing legs fold out like we have in SFS1 but these new landing legs actually extend out like pistons so that is something cool. On the transfer vehicle, we see that the struts are at an angle. So I assume that we can angle parts in the game itself like without having to go to the blueprint file. And also on the bottom of the lander is a cute little rover. That's adorable. Next, we have a better look at how the smoke is animated. Now you won't see it here because this is just a screenshot. But watch the trailer. The smoke is one of my favorite things in this trailer. Next, we have a look at the iconic Saturn V rocket, except that this one has two solid boosters as well. And if you look closely, you'll see that these solid boosters have different textures than the rest of the fuel tanks. This further cements my assumptions that SRBs are going to be a separate part. Like, instead of just having solid fuel as one of the other fuel options, like liquid hydrogen, liquid methane, I think that the solid boosters are going to be a separate part within themselves. And this is where the trailer ends. In my opinion, the trailer looks very promising. The audio used here reminded me of the KSP2 trailer. So I can't help but subconsciously compare the two trailers. It's just a matter of a few months until the game releases so that I can truly compare the two games. But honestly, I am very hyped for this game. I have very high expectations and I have faith that these expectations will be met and they will be so much more than what I expected. So that is it for this video folks. If you guys like this video then hit the like button and subscribe if you like me as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.